Ecclesiastes chapter 9. For all this I considered in my heart, even to declare all this, that the righteous and the wise and their works are in the hand of God. No man knoweth either love or hatred by all that is before them. All things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked, to the good and to the clean and to the unclean, to him that sacrificeth and to him that sacrificeth not. As is the good, so is the sinner, and he that sweareth as he that feareth an oath. Verse 3. This is an evil among all things that are done under the sun, that there is one event unto all. Yea, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil, and madness is in their heart while they live. And after that, they go to the dead. We're picking up from verse 2. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 2. <clears throat> Let's turn in the other Bible. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 2. All things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked, to the good and to the clean and to the unclean, to him that sacrificeth and to him that sacrificeth not. As is the good, so is the sinner, and he that sweareth as he that feareth an oath. There is one event. And God says in Ezekiel 21 verse 3, turn there, Ezekiel 21 verse 3, And say to the land of Israel, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I am against thee, and will draw forth my sword out of his sheath, and will cut off from thee the righteous and the wicked. God says he will cut off the righteous with the wicked, in spite of what he said to Abraham before the law. Genesis 18.23 Despite of what he said to Abraham before the law. Genesis 18, verse 23 And Abraham drew near and said, Will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? As is the good, so is the sinner. As is the good, so is the sinner. And we need to look how the word sinner is used here. As it is used throughout the Old Testament. Let's look at a few. Because we've said before, words not only have different meanings, but are used in different contexts. And we need to look at the word sinner here. Turn to Proverbs 11. Proverbs chapter 11. Verse 31. Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed in the earth, much more the wicked and the sinner. Proverbs 13, verse 6 and 22. Proverbs 13, verse 6 and 22. Righteousness keepeth him that is upright in the way, but wickedness overthroweth the sinner. Verse 22. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. And Ecclesiastes 2, Ecclesiastes 2, verse 26. For God giveth to a man that is good in his sight wisdom and knowledge and joy, but to the sinner... He giveth travail to gather and to heap up, that he may give to him that is good before God. This also is vanity and vexation of spirit. So as is the good, so is the sinner. And the word sinner, how it's used in regard here in the Old Testament compared to the New Testament. John 9.24, John 9. Then again called they the man that was blind and said unto him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. So into the New Testament, John 9, 24, before the resurrection, Luke 7, 37. Luke 7, 37. And behold, a woman in the city which was a sinner, 
when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, bought an alabaster box of ointment. So, let's have a look. There is one event. God says he will cut off the righteous with the wicked, in spite of what he said to Abraham before the law. Genesis 18.23 As is the good, so is the sinner. See how the word sinner is used here, as it is used throughout the Old Testament and into the New Testament, before the resurrection. Even Paul, after the resurrection, calls the Gentiles sinners in distinction from the Jews, i.e. him and Peter. Look at Galatians 2. Turn to Galatians 2. The way the word sinner is applied, and to whom? Galatians 2. Then 14 years after I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and with Barnabas, and took um, Titus with me also. And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preached among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised, and that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, beware of false brethren, folks, that they might bring us into bondage, to whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. But of these who seem to be somewhat, whatsoever they were, it makes no matter to me, God accepted no man's person, for they who seemed to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. But contrarywise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter, for he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. And when James, Cephas and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship that we should go unto the heathen and they unto the circumcision. So Peter called to the Jews, Paul to the Gentiles. Only they would that we should remember the poor, the, the same which I also was forward to do. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. So now Paul is standing against Peter. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles, but when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. One minute he's eating with the Gentiles, then the Jews come and he don't want to do it anymore. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. Bit, bit of a hypocrite there, wasn't he? So Paul has to put him right. This great leader... The, uh, the apostle Peter, Paul puts him right. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter, before them all, before them all, if thou being a Jew livest after the manner of the Gentiles and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do, as do the Jews? We who are Jews by nature and not what? There it is. You see it? We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles. So he makes a distinction between Jews and Gentiles, and he calls them sinners. Observe also that Solomon has been reading Genesis to Deuteronomy. The clean and the unclean, in Ecclesiastes 9.2, the clean and the unclean, let's just read it again, Ecclesiastes 9.2 All things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked, to the good and to the clean, and to the unclean, to him that sacrificed and to him that sacrificed not. As is the good, so is the sinner. And he that sweareth as he that feareth an oath. So the clean and the unclean are references to Leviticus, chapter 11. The sacrificing and not sacrificing have to do with Numbers chapter 9, Deuteronomy chapter 16, and Leviticus chapters 3 to 7. Ecclesiastes 9-2, which is where we are at now, is the ultimate in pessimistic amorality, a moral, i.e. lacking a moral sense 
I'm concerned whether something is right or wrong. It's immoral. It's lacking a moral sense. It's unconcerned whether something is right or wrong. All things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked, to the good and to the clean, and to the unclean and to him that sacrifice sacrificeth and to him that sacrificeth not as is the good so is the sinner and he that sweareth as he that feareth an oath remember in the New Testament it says a verse doesn't it where it says to him that is clean and to him that is unclean do you remember that verse? I'm pulling out the air now you have to check that in a concordance if you take the passage to mean that there is no difference between a good man and a bad man anywhere, anytime, under any circumstances, circumstances or conditions. As is the good, so is the sinner. And he that sweareth, as he that feareth the oath. Go back to Ecclesiastes 5. Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Ecclesiastes 5, verse 1 to 5. Sorry, verse 1 to 6. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools, for they consider not that they do evil. Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven, and thou upon earth. Therefore let thy words be few. For a dream cometh through the multitude of business, and a fool's voice is known by multitude of words. When thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for he hath no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Better is it that thou shouldest not vow, than thou shouldest vow, shouldest vow and not pay. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. Wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thine hands? As is the good, so is the sinner. And he that sweareth is he that feareth the oath. But Solomon certainly doesn't mean that. Or he would not have written down Ecclesiastes 12, verse 2. So he doesn't mean this. While the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not dark and nor the clouds return after the rain. Have I got the right one there? In 7 verse 18. Seven verse eighteen. It is good that thou shouldest not take hold of this, yea also from this withdraw not thine hand, for he that feareth God shall come forth of them all. Fearing God coming forth of them all, no matter what you go through. Remember he keeps looking at it from different perspectives. But at the end of the day he says, He that is believing in God, he'll come forth of it all. No matter what happens to him, it will be best for him. The person that trusts and believes in God, it will work out the best, no matter what hardship you have to go through. It will all work out best for you in the end. Look at verse 26, same chapter. And I find more bitter than death, the woman whose heart is snares and nets, and her hands as bands, who pleaseth God shall escape from her, for the sinner shall be taken by her. So he doesn't mean what he wrote there in that sense, otherwise he wouldn't have written these. Look at Ecclesiastes 2.26. For God giveth to a man that is good in his sight, wisdom and knowledge and joy, but to the sinner he giveth travail to gather and to heap up, that he may give to him that is good before God. This also is vanity and vexation of spirit. So he's writing from a worldly point of view and he's writing from a, a believer's point of view. We have to keep that in mind when we deal with Ecclesiastes. The passage is limited to the context of the theme i.e. the same bad things that happen to unclean, wicked sinners can happen to clean, sacrificing saints who fear God. The same bad things that happen to unclean, wicked sinners can happen to clean, sacrificing saints who fear God. And this matches Ecclesiastes 8 verse 14. There is a vanity which is done upon the earth that there, is a, there, there be just men unto whom it happeneth according to the work of the wicked. Again, there be wicked men to whom it happeneth according to the work of the righteous. I said that this also is vanity. 
Even Christians that are living godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer bad things. We don't escape everything down here just because we're living for God. We have to go through trials and tribulations. We go through illness. Some, some of us have to go through terminal illness. We have to go through bereavement. We have to go through all the hassles of life. Losing a job, not being able to pay your bills. Maybe losing your home, losing your business, losing your family, divorce. All kinds of things the Christian goes through. But the end for the Christian is to be with the Lord Jesus Christ for eternity. Fantastic. So he cometh out of it all. Better. So whatever we have to go through, the Lord will deliver us from everything in the end. It will all work out good, even though we have it hard now. So go back, Ecclesiastes, chapter 9. For all this I considered in my heart, even to declare all this, that the righteous and the wise and their works are in the hand of God. No man knoweth either love or hatred by all that is before them. All things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked, to the good and to the clean, and to the unclean. To him that sacrificeth and to him that sacrificeth not, as is the good, so is the sinner. And he that sweareth, as he that feareth an oath. This is an evil among all things that are done under the sun, that there is one event unto all, yea also the heart, the heart of the sons of men is full of evil, and madness is in their heart while they live, and after that they go to the dead. The this, where it starts off this, the this points forward to the heart and to the madness, and Solomon only includes that there is one event to show, to show us that he is about to make an application of the one event mentioned in verse 2. I can understand this being a little bit confusing. Let me give you an illustration. Turn to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2 verse 16. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. This is that which was spoken. And then what happens? Nothing quoted was fulfilled at Pentecost. Peter is merely pointing out something that Joel is getting ready to say. This is that which, do you understand? And that's what's happening here in Ecclesiastes 9 verse 3. The this points forward to the heart and, to the, and the madness. Solomon only includes that there is one event to show you that he is about to make an application of the one event mentioned in verse 2. You're going to have to listen to this a few times to get all this. And that is what's happening here in Acts 2, when Peter says that. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and he goes on, on into the prophet Joel's prophecy, and yet none of that was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost. And this is where the Charismatics and the Pentecostals break their necks. They break their necks on that verse. Because they can't rightly divide the scriptures. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. For all this I considered in my heart, even to declare all this, that the righteous and the wise and their works are in the hand of God. No man knoweth either love or hatred, but all that is before them. All things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked, to the good and to the clean, and to the unclean, and to him that sacrificeth, and to him that sacrificeth not. As is the good, so is the sinner, and he that sweareth, as he that feareth an oath. This is an evil among all things that are done under the sun, that there is one event unto all. Yea, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil, and madness is in their heart while they live. And after that, they go to the dead. And madness is in their heart while they live. And after that, they go to the dead. And this view of man 
Madness is in their heart and they go to the dead. They're full of evil. This view of man is confirmed by the Lord Jesus Christ and also by the Apostle Paul. Turn to Matthew 7, 11. Matthew 7, verse 11. Jesus Christ here is speaking to his disciples and he says this, If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? If ye then, being evil, can you believe that? That's what Jesus says to his disciples. Ye being evil, This backs up exactly what Solomon's saying here. And that's all we are, is evil. We're evil people saved by the grace of God. Look at Paul's letter to the Romans. Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. Verse 10 to 12. Romans 3, 10 to 12. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. We've just read, madness is in their hearts while they live. The sinner. But we're all sinners, yet some of us have been saved by the grace of God. But madness is in their heart. It also said that, let's turn there, about being full. There is an evil thing among all things that are done under the sun, and there is one event unto all, yea, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil. We're full of evil. And madness is in our hearts while we live. And after that we go to the dead. We are evil. Jesus Christ confirmed it, and Paul confirmed it. We are evil. In order to get saved, you need to know that you're lost. People don't like being called sinners. But that's exactly what we are. Sinners. We're evil people. And sin is insanity. Sin is insanity. To sin against God is insane. You're insane. You want to live for the Lord Jesus Christ in everything you do. Live the best life you possibly can. Stay out of all sin. Get away from it. Flee fornication. Flee the love of money. Flee idolatry. Flee youthful lusts. Run from sin. Sin is insanity. Yea, also, the heart of the sons of men is full of evil. And madness is in their heart while they live. And after that they go to the dead. After that they go to the dead. Now Solomon has the living better off than the dead. Although he has just recorded only a few years back that the dead were better off than the living. You see, he keeps coming round in circles. Look at Ecclesiastes 6 verse 5. Ecclesiastes 6 verse 5. Moreover, he hath not seen the sun nor known anything. This hath more rest than the other. And 7 verse 1. A good name is better than precious ointment and the day of death than the day of one's birth. He's coming full circle again. This time, where he speaks here, he's basing his conclusion upon the fact of Job 2, verse 4. Job, the words that Job said. Job chapter 2, verse 4. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath, will he give for his life. So self-survival, self-preservation is the main thing. He'll do anything, man will do anything, cling to life to stay alive. This is an evil among all things that are done under the sun, that there is one event unto all, yea, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil, and madness is in their heart while they live, and after that they go to the dead. One term in there that I thought would be worth looking at here 
is full of evil. Full of evil. That occurs once only in scripture. Full of evil. Yet there are many references what we need to cross-reference with this. And the first one would be, of course, Jeremiah 17, verse 9. Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it. You know what you are like, really, in life. You know what your motives are like. You know when you say you'll do something or when you think things. You know what you are like and God knows. You can, you can confuse everybody, you can make out you're somebody you're not, but you know what you're like. Deep down. And the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. You can't trust your heart. You can't trust anything about yourself. Your flesh is evil. You rebel against God all the time. We are nothing without the Lord. Mankind. We are Christians and we are living for the Lord, yet we still sin. We still think wrong things, say wrong things, do wrong things. We, you know, we can't control our tongues. Our heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? God knows it. Genesis 6, 5. Genesis 6, 5. You talk a, about a picture that the Bible paints of the human race. Look at some of these verses. Genesis 6, 5, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every, every, every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Full of evil. Look at Genesis 8, 21. And the Lord smelled the sweet savour and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his Youth, neither will I again smite any more everything living as I have done. Listen, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Notice it said youth, not child. Remember we said about the age of accountability? Evil from his youth. You had youth causing all the riots around the country. They were accountable for the sin they knew what they were doing. They were rebelling against God. They were rebelling against authority. They knew what they were doing. They're accountable for their sin. Youth. A baby's not accountable for his sin. There's an age of accountability. So the Bible is clear, crystal clear, and perfectly accurate. Proverbs 6.18. Proverbs. Proverbs 6, verse 18. And heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief. That's what the sons of men is about. Full of evil, a heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief. Think what man has devised. Think what man has created. What man has promoted. What he promotes today. A sex crazed world. An, env an environment full of violence. He makes a film. He doesn't make a film about walking in the countryside by rivers and mountains and things and beautiful things like that. That wouldn't sell. So he's got to put sex and violence in the film to get it to sell. He's got to have loads of murders in it and blood. So man creates and devises all these wicked, wicked imaginations. All the films that come out, they've all got bad stuff in them. Hardly any film today is um, good for a Christian to watch. People sit down and they, they write, you know, they start writing a film or they have a storyline and they enter into the horror aspect. And they want satanic beings coming up and cutting people up and eating them and things like that. That's what man is like. That's what his heart, out of the, the abundance of the mouth, the heart speaketh. Is that right? The other way around. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh, sorry. Man is full of wickedness. What he thinks he is. What you feed on. The eyes of the window of the soul. What you feed on, you are. All the stuff that man produces. Go out to any, I don't recommend it, but any magazine rack and see what's on them. That's man's filth being promoted everywhere you go. Violence, sex, everything. It's just coming out. 
What's in him? Full of evil, the Bible says. Matthew 15. Matthew 15. Matthew 15, verse 19. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts. Out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. Out of the heart, it said. I've got a cross reference, Luke 24, 38. And he said unto them, Why are ye troubled, and why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Thoughts arise in your hearts. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts. Full of evil man is. Murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. You know what? You take that verse out there and that's today's news. You take that verse out there and that's today's television programmes. If you watch all these ridiculous programmes like the soaps, these dire, this filth, you watch all that, you're living on that. You know, how many people just get up, they can't, they can't, get that television on quick enough, they don't turn it off until the last minute, and they're feeding off this filth. Out of the heart proceed evil thoughts. That's what the television it gives you, it shows you. Evil things, you have evil thoughts. Murders, adulteries, fornication, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. That's, not, that's all the subjects of a film. That's all the subject, that's what you're feeding on, that's what this world is feeding on. That's why we've got such a de- degenerate generation. They're feeding on this filth. The filth of the television. Watching Coronation Street, East Enders, feeding on homosexuality, the sin of the Bible. These sins that we've just read about, the world is feeding on. No wonder we are living in a terrible time. Isaiah 59, Isaiah 59. This is a good passage when I read this this evening. Isaiah 59, verse 1 to 15. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. That's what's happened today. Your your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue hath muttered perverseness. That's what's happening today. None calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. That's true. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. They They hatch cockatrice eggs and weave the spider's web. He that eateth of their eggs dieth, and that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. Their webs shall not become garments, neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity, and the act of violence is in their hands. Their feet run to to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity, wasting and destruction are in their paths. The way of peace they know not. There is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. Therefore is judgment far from us. Neither doth justice overtake us. We wait for light, but behold obscurity. For brightness, but we walk in darkness. We grope for the wall like the blind, and we grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday as in the night. We are in desolate places as dead men. We roar all like bears and mourn sore like doves. We look for judgment, but there is none. For salvation, but it is far off from us. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us, and as for our iniquities, we know them. In transgressing and lying against the Lord, and departing away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood, and judgment is turned away backward, and justice standeth afar off. The truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. Yea, truth faileth, and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw it, and it it displeased him that there was no judgment. Don't you think that is a fantastic passage for today's world? 
That was written Isaiah 59, all those hundreds of years ago. That's, that's today, that is. That's England 2011. Man has not learned from history. He never learns. There's nothing new under the sun. Same old, same old. Romans seven eighteen. Romans 7, verse 18. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. I am nothing. There's nothing good in me. That's man. That's mankind. That is you and me. There is nothing good in us. Man learns nothing. He never listens to God. The times he does, it all goes well, but he gets sucked back into his sin. And like a dog returns to it with vomit, he goes back. As Christians, you ought to stay as close to Jesus Christ as you possibly can in this sinful, sin-sick world. Revelation 16, listen to this. Revelation 16, verse 9 to 11. When God is pouring out his judgment upon the world, do you think man would listen then? He sees these supernatural signs, these wonders, these great events. Will man listen then? Will man turn to God then? Surely Revelation 16, 9 to 11. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God. They're not listening, they're blaspheming God. Which hath power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast. And his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain. They're in such pain. God's pouring the judgment out. Will they turn to God? Listen. And blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds. Don't you think that incredible? That God's pouring out his judgment and he's, um, he's pouring out his wrath upon the earth. And if they just turned to him, but they repented not and they blasphemed the name of God. They are gnawing their tongues. They are, you know how painful that is. They're biting their tongues and they're cursing God at the same time. Man is deceitful above all things, his heart is, and desperately wicked. There is no good in the flesh. And you get people like Rob Bell and Rick Warren, who are false prophets and false teachers, saying it's self. And keep pointing to me, me, me. There is no good in us. There is nothing good in us. Thank God... That the Lord Jesus Christ loved us so much that he came to die for us. And pull us out of this mess, out of this mire. And save us, and clean us, and justify us, and sanctify us. And wash all our sins away through his shed blood. Thank God for that. Because you and I could not do that ourselves. Salvation, what a great gift that is. Are you saved? I said full of evil is interesting here. It only appears once, but let's look, I want to look at just a few more scriptures before we close. Job 14.1 on this theme of man and how evil he is. Modern Christianity paints man in a good light. The Bible doesn't. He's negative every time. Left to himself. Job 14, verse 1. Man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. How true that is. Man is full of trouble. You don't just have trouble in your life, you cause a lot of the trouble in your life. If you followed the Lord Jesus Christ and everything he said, and you adhered to this book, the word of God, that's the best thing that can happen to you in your life. He'd guide you through everything. But you think you know best and you do it your way. No wonder you've got trouble in your life half the time. If we're not abiding by this book, the word of God, you're going to get trouble. You won't know which way to turn. Thy word is a lamp unto thy feet and a light unto thy path. Can you see? Or are you blind? 
Every single Bible correct on planet Earth is blind. James White is probably one of the blindest of them all. He can't see. He thinks he's doing good. Satanic. He's, he's doing the work of the devil and can't see it. Talk about being deceived. Guy hasn't a clue. But he thinks he's clever, intellectual. Thinks he's doing good. It's ridiculous. Job 20 verse 11. Job 20 verse 11. His bones are full of the sin of his youth, which shall lie down with him in the dust. His bones are full of the sin of his youth, which shall lie down with him in the dust. Sin of thy youth. Get saved when you're young. Get saved as early as you possibly can and depart from the evil that's in the world. Psalm 10. This is another amazing passage. Psalm 10, verse 2 to 11. The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire and blesseth the, um, the covetous whom the Lord abhorreth. Get that? The wicked boasteth of his heart's desire and blesseth, blesseth the covetous whom the Lord abhorreth. Abhorreth. The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. What an amazing verse that is. The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffeth at them. He hath said in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. I had somebody say those words to me this week. I said, you're in for a comeuppance. You're going to get your comeuppance. He said, not me. Not me. He really believes in himself. He's a millionaire. Another guy said to me, who's another multi-millionaire. He says to me on the phone, he says, you've got to believe in yourself. This is totally anti-scriptural. The last thing you want to do is believe in yourself. You believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, believe in his word. You don't trust yourself. You can't even trust yourself to, well, to do anything. He hath said in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. Both those two people, that verse sums those two people up also. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. Aren't these amazing scriptures? You, you don't even need to comment on these scriptures. They're so crystal clear, they're so plain. He sitteth in the lurking places of the villages. In the secret places doth he murder the innocent. His eyes are privily set against the poor. He lieth in wait secretly as a lion in his den. He lieth in wait to catch the poor. He doth catch the poor when he draweth him into his net. He croucheth and humbleth himself that the poor may fall by his strong ones. He sucks them in and he gets them. And he destroys them. That's what man does. Man doesn't care for anybody else. There's no care. Who cares? We wrote the tract. Who cares? Does anyone really care? Do you get the picture? Nobody cares. But a Christian, a Bible-believing Christian, should care. Put the Lord first, reach the people around you, put others before you. What a great passage that is. Isaiah 2, verse 8. Isaiah 2, verse, <coughs> verse 8. Their land also is full of idols. They worship the work of their own hands, that which their own fingers have made. <laughs> Translated, I think, in the Greek, get it? Is England. That was a joke. But listen, that is England. Their land also is full of idols. When you start getting TV shows calling themselves Pop Idol, you know how far down the road we are. When we are promoting idolatry in the land, you know how far we've come. There's no return. We're just waiting for the last person to get saved and then bang, we are gone to be with the Lord Jesus Christ at the rapture. Our job today is to be the best testimony and witness we possibly can and to be the best, brightest light as a Christian in this dark, dark world. 
Our country is so dark, and it's getting darker by the moment. Every day it's getting darker and darker. We are to shine as bright as we possibly can. But the trouble is, we become vulnerable, and we can become fearful. We shouldn't fear man, but we do, oftentimes. But you're going to stand out the closer you are to Jesus Christ, the more you take a stand. give you a couple more Jeremiah 23.10 Jeremiah 23 verse 10 for the land is full of adulterers for because of swearing the land mourneth the pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up and their course is evil and their force is not right that's our land today Ezekiel 7.23 Ezekiel 7, verse 23. Make a chain, for the land is full of bloody crimes, and the city is full of violence. (laughs) Man alive, you you could read that in any daily newspaper. Bloody crimes everywhere, and the city is full of violence. Ezekiel 9, 9. Then said he unto me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceeding great, and the land is full of blood, and the city full of perverseness. For they say, The Lord hath forsaken the earth, and the Lord seeth not. Their city is full of perverseness. They have have stopped believing in God, they have no accountability for their sin, they're not accountable to the Creator God, so now they are totally perverse. And every city that you go to, There are places in that that are totally perverse. We are living in a perverse world, a perverted world. Matthew 23, 28. Matthew 23, verse 28. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. You may appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Are you living like that? You appear okay on the outside, but inside you're full of dead man's bones. You're full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Luke 11, 34 to 36. Luke 11, we're nearly through. 11, 34 to 36, then we're going to finish on a positive for you. 11, 34 to 36. The light of the body is the eye, therefore thine eye is single. When thine eye is single, thy whole body also is full of light. When thine eye is evil, thy body also is full of darkness. So what you focus your eyes on your, is what fills your life. If you're filling your life with good things, you're um, reading the Word of God, your eyes are concentrating, you're sowing um, you know, the Word of God into your, into your life, then you'll get fruit from your life. But if you're feeding on the dark things, your whole body will be full of darkness. Take heed, therefore, that the light which is in thee be not darkness. If thy whole body, therefore, be full of light, having no part dark, the whole shall be full of light, as when the bright shining of a candle doth give thee light. As a Christian, you want to feed off all the Christian things in life. Get away from the secular. Get away from the carnal. Get away from the world. Romans 1, you need to read. We haven't got time tonight, but Romans 1, you need to read. But especially, verse 29, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, and it goes on, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters and inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without, na- without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. That's directed straight at this land of ours. Romans 3, Romans 3, 
As it is written, verse 10 to 18, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one, there is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way, they are together become unprofitable, there is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulchre, with their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood, destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. There is no fear of God before their eyes. When was the last person you met that had a fear of God before their eyes? The people you work with, the people I work with, have no fear of God before their eyes. They are only interested in themselves and their families. They have no fear of God before their eyes. Most of the people I have ever met in life have no fear of God before their eyes. They do not fear God. They will be judged accordingly. They could be ones going through the tribulation. And God pouring down his wrath and his vials of anger and they still won't repent. I find that incredible. Two Peter two verse fourteen. Two Peter two. having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin beguiling unstable souls a heart they, they have exercised without covetous practices cursed children having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin that's the world we are living in today folks so full of when we come to that verse 3 in Ecclesiastes 9 Verse 3, this is an evil among all things that are done under the sun, that there is one event unto all, yea, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil, and madness is in their heart while they live, and after that they go to the dead. Full of evil. Now compare that to the Lord. Just four, five verses, then we're through. Psalm 29. Psalm 29, verse 4. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. Psalm 33 verse 5. He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. We have corrupted this world. The Lord made this world a beautiful place. Nature is beautiful. Animals are beautiful. Wonderful things we see. Look at the heavens. Look at the complexity of life. Look at the animals. Look at the um, vegetation. Look at the trees and the river. Look at life. It's full of his goodness. Psalm 48 verse 10. Psalm 48 verse 10. According to thy name, O God, so is thy praise. Unto the ends of the earth, thy right hand is full of righteousness. Thy right hand is full of righteousness. Everything he does is perfect, is true. He's full of love, kindness and mercy. He's perfect. 111, Psalm 111. Psalm 111 verse 4. Psalm 111 verse 4. He hath made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He's full of compassion. He understands. And I love this, when the Lord Jesus Christ turns up, John 1. John 1 verse 14. And the Word was made flesh, the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Son, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full, full, full of grace and truth. What a verse to finish on. The Lord Jesus Christ is full of grace and and truth. We are living in a terrible time. A world that has turned its back on Jesus Christ. The world that has turned its back upon God. A world that has turned its back upon the Word of God. God. The Word of God. It rebels against authority and it does not want to be held accountable to its sin. But we will all stand before the Lord Jesus Christ and give an account of our lives to him one day. 
that will be a horrific time for some and a blessed time for others you either die with your sins forgiven or you die in your sins and you have that choice let's pray